so God can use me anywhere, Lord, oh, anytime. Oh, I'm going to work so God can use me anywhere, Lord, oh, anytime. Oh, I'm going to work, Lord, so God can use me. sing so God can use me anywhere Lord anytime let's all stand oh I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere Lord oh anytime I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. How about that prayer life? Oh, I'm going to pray so. God can use me. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. I tell you, he can't use you unless you surrender to him. We want him to have the full preeminence in our lives, giving him that time. Amen. Let's uh, change the order of the service as our brother comes out. Makia D. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Oh, yes, open the eyes of my heart. For I want to see you, oh Jesus, I want to see you, so open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. high and lifted up, oh, you're shining in the light of your glory, so pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, 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 oh, Good to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon. I trust that each and every one of you are doing well, and I trust that uh, the ones out there in the parking lot and, and those viewing at home are doing well and blessed uh, by His uh, wonderful, exceeding blessings in this hour. Amen. We are blessed people in this hour. 
Amen. I believe that. No matter if things are bleak, no matter if things look, look bad, amen, but I believe that we are blessed people still. Glory. Because God's in control. Amen. You and, my, you and me may not be in control, but God is. Right, <laughs> and God's very aware that you and I, His bride is still here right. on this earth. Glory. And that's all He cares about. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So, um, so we're just going to go ahead and go to the Word. Um, we're going to read from Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. <clears throat> Isaiah 26. We'll start at verse 1. I'm going to read to 1 through 8, and then I'm going to read verses 17 through verse 21. The Bible says here, Isaiah, In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have, strong, we have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Let's go down to verse 17. Pay attention to these verses. Like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out in her pangs. So have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Thy dead man shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Amen. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. I want you to keep in mind, saints, that as we read these things, you know, the Bible says and uh, um, the Bible uh, it has compound meanings. Amen. Right. So it, it, it could be talking. This is applying to, to Israel. Amen. But I believe also it's applying to us right. in this hour. Amen. Yeah. I was looking at this scripture in, 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 in the other day and, and, and I, I noticed this. You may have read it before or not, but. I thought it was very appropriate, especially in this hour that we're living in. And I just wanted to title this, amen, this, call it Shut In With God. Amen. Shut In With God, amen. So we're going to look at something here in just a moment, and you just pray for us. Maybe the Lord will give us something that can help us during this hour, amen. Let's just bow our heads. Our precious Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, once again. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to open back the pages of your word, Lord. And Father, we know, Lord Jesus, that without you, we are nothing, Father God. Without you, Lord God, we would surely fall, Lord. Where would we be, Father, if it wasn't for your mercy and grace in this hour, Lord God? Father, some of us would be in a hospital, Lord God. Some of us would be, Father, uh, maybe in a jail cell, Lord. And some of us, Father, may be in a casket, dead, Lord God. But Lord Jesus, it, uh, it, it behooved you, Father God, to bring us, Father God, into this very hour that we are living in, Father. Because, Lord, you have promised in your word that you would have a bride without spot or wrinkle, Lord Jesus. And I believe, Father God, with all my heart that that's, that's the people that I'm standing here with in this building in this hour, Lord Jesus. And, Lord God, you're, you will have a many-membered bride, and you do have a many-membered bride in this hour, Father, throughout all the world, Lord Jesus. And I pray that you'd help us to step into that promise, Lord God, because, Father God, it is, Father God, real, and it is your truth. Lord, I ask that you'd meet the needs amongst us now, Father God. Speak to us through your word, Lord Jesus, and help me to get aside, Lord Jesus, so that you'd speak only, Father God, what you desire for your people to hear, Lord God, and not my own words, but your words, Lord. We commit ourselves into you now. Commit this time. Con continue to be with Brother Wade, Lord, and traveling. Bring him back safely. And Father God, we just thank you once again for your blessings. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. 
Amen. God bless you, saints. You may be seated in this hour. Amen. Amen. So we want to look at something here because I believe as you and as you and I know, you know, we've experienced uh, in the past few months uh, some pretty abrupt changes. Right. And uh, and all of us can definitely feel that those changes have impacted us one way or another. And I don't think anybody in this world could say that these changes have not impacted us. Amen. But, you know, uh, most of us in our mind would have never fathomed. Amen. How quickly society and the way of life would have changed the way it was two months ago. It's completely different today. Amen. We, we wouldn't have never fathomed that things would have turned out like this. Um, and uh, the, the things to, to turn in a blink of an eye. Amen. Panic and fear, you know, has struck the, the, the land, has struck the people of, of the world. Uh, you go out to the store, you know, yesterday we were out in the, in the, in the market and, and you can just see it in their eyes. You can see it in the people's eyes. They're, they're not reacting the same. It's totally different. Of course, that's all you can see is their eyes. But, <laughs> but you can just see it. It, it, it's, it's totally changed them. Amen. Yeah. And it's completely, it's completely uh, um, uh, fulfills what, what God said in the word. Amen. That the, the last days, man's hearts will be failing them for fear. Right. For the things that would come to pass it, 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 uh, are coming on the earth. Amen. Yes. We're seeing before our very eyes an economy that, that had been flourishing. Amen. For the past three and a half years. Right. It had been growing. Amen. We've seen it in two months completely tank. Right. Record numbers of unemployment. Businesses shutting down. Right. People in, 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 in lines, uh, four or five hours in cars waiting for just some free groceries. Right. It's totally different. People who had stable jobs for many years now don't even have business. Now they're facing businesses shutting down. Now they're facing uh, uh, layoffs and looking for unemployment, something that they've never even done before. And that's what we're seeing in this hour. Amen. And we're also seeing, amen, where, where the assembling of ourselves together to worship has been hindered. Something that you and I have, I, at least in my lifetime, I've never seen. Uh, 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 the way it has been hindered in this hour. The way that uh, you and I, uh, in this hour, uh, we desire, the true son and daughter of God, desire to fulfill what it says there in Hebrews, where it says to not forsake the assembles of your assemb assembling together. Right. We, we, we desire that as a true son and daughter of God, right. yet it's being hindered in this hour. Uh, and, and, and you know what, saints? It might be hindered the way it is right now, and it probably may get worse later down the road. But you know what? The thing is that we need to, we need to ask ourselves, Things are still, you still have food on your table. You still have clothes on your back. We still can open the church doors and we still can see one another. We can still uh, call one another. We can still talk one another, even if it is through text or whatever. Amen. But there might come a point in time where none of, where, where you, we're not going to be able to even walk through those doors. What if it comes to that point in time? Because Brother Branham even talked about these things. They might turn these churches into storehouses. Now, I'm not trying to bring fear. I'm not trying to bring panic, but I, I'm trying to get to a point. What are you going to do then? If you are not allowing this opportunity right now to experience and to draw closer to God, because I believe God is very mindful that his bride is here on earth. And he only cares about two things, fulfilling his word and for his bride to get ready. Yes, Amen. So if, he, if that's the only things he took, that he cares about, and if you are struggling in this hour to even take the opportunity to draw closer to God, to get in his word, to pray more, to, 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 to seek him more, to let him talk back to you, because I believe we have more time than we ever had before. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I believe that with all my heart. I know I have. Right. And if you are not getting into God in this hour and you think that you could just still live life the way it, 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 amen that means you have a spiritual personal problem that you need help from God because things are going to get worse later on churches are going to close and you're not going to have a physical place to worship and what then you better be in Christ 
You better be in his word. You better be in a personal relationship with God because the government's not going to save you. Nobody is going to save you. Only God and his word, his name, amen, is a strong tower, amen, in this hour for you and I. For those that love him. Praise God. So we know that God is coming back for his bride. You know, in the midst of this panic and confusion, God is only concerned about coming to get that little bride. God isn't concerned about you and I. Remember, he said that he would not put more on us than we could handle. Right? right. right? He said that in his word. Right. Now, we still have it easy. Yes. <laughs> we do. This isn't nothing. Right. Amen. Exactly right. It could get a little bit more squeezed later on. Right. A little bit more squeezed later down the road. Right. What will you do then? What will you do then? What attitude will you have then? Amen. And I believe that right now, this is a little time for us to get ready for that. Right. Exactly. That's, that's, that's how God, I don't see it as a bleak thing and as a, uh, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a terrible thing. See it as an opportunity for you and I in this hour. Because I believe it's an opportunity for us in this hour. Right. Amen. And, and he, he made a promise. God made a promise to her through his word. And she's believing that promise. We're believing that promise. That God is going to fulfill that promise, amen, amen, that he has made to us through his word. And, you know, it reminds me of that story that Brother Branham told about uh, that little girl, that little wash girl who was looking, uh, who, who was minding her own business. And she was the, uh, not as pretty as the girls, the local girls in the town. And she was just minding her own business, doing her work, just being a, just a, 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 a little wash girl. And there came one time a, 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 a man uh, from another state, a, a, rich, a rich young man looking for a, for a bride. He was looking for a woman that he wanted to marry. And he went to that specific town to find himself a, a, a wife. He looked at all the, the neighboring, all the girls in the town, and they just none of them could fit hit what he was looking for. They, 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 were, they looked pretty. They had beautiful clothes. They might even have come from lines of families that were rich. But you know what? It didn't fit what he was looking for until he saw that little wash girl. And that little wash girl, amen, had a character in her, amen, that he had not seen in any of the other ones. But he saw it in her. And she just kept her mind her biz minding her business. And probably what drew her to his attention is that she wasn't there trying to get his attention. Right. <laughs> That's, that's a good girl. Right. Young man, if you, are, if you see, I'm just telling you this, you see girls that are trying to get your attention, you better believe that might be a one to stay away from. <laughs> I'm just telling you young people. Right. She was not there trying to flirt with him. She was not there trying to get his attention. Amen. She was just minding her business, and he said, that's the one I want. Right. So he went up to her, and he said, are you willing to marry me? And she said, yes. <laughs> But, she, but he said, all right, I'll come back a year from now. Right, right. And that stood to her. That was such a great thing for her. And it was, it, it was locked in in her yeah. for a whole year. That's all she had in her mind. He's coming for me the same time right. next year. Right. Amen. Right. He's coming for me. This, he promised it. Right. And I believe it. Right. And everything she did, amen, it was because she was wanting for that promise to be fulfilled. Right. Amen. It, 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 she was so concentrated on that promise. She was locked down by that promise made to her. She couldn't do anything but to keep that promise in the forefront of everything that she did. Right. And you know what, saints? That little girl, that, that young girl, amen. And we know the story. Eventually, he came back that same year and took her away. Right. Right. He fulfilled his promise. Right. And Brother Branham typed that as, a, as, a, as the bride in, in Christ. Amen. Amen. Right. God has promised us in this hour great things to, uh, 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 to take place. We're still looking for a resurrection to take place. What a great promise that we have in this hour. That the dead saints shall rise. Amen. And that we are going to see them physically walk among us. And after that, a rapture. Amen. To meet him in the sky. I don't know of any greater thing than that, saints. That trumps any, any virus. That trumps anything going on right now with the government. That trumps anything. Amen. Look into those things. Amen. That trumps it all. Amen. But you know what? That little girl, that young wash girl, she was probably in her room secretly 
every, every now and then in the little room that she was looking at, she would look at herself in the mirror and say, how could she, he choose me? How, how in the world could he choose me? And she'd look at herself. I'm not like the other girls. I mean, look at the pretty gowns they have. Look at what they have. And yet, what came back to her was that promise. <laughs> that promise was what motivated her. But he said, amen. amen. He said that he was coming back. I don't know why, but he said he was, and I'm just going to. And she would maybe look and see how that, uh, that wedding gown, she would eventually, she eventually got that wedding gown, and she would try it on every now and then, just like you and I, amen, should be being dressed on a daily basis with that wedding gown, amen. that word. Amen. And she would look and see, and, 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 and dress. yes, it looks good. It looks good. But she would then she would have to take it off because eventually that marriage was going to take place. She wanted to preserve it. Amen. For us saints in this hour, we need to keep that wedding garment on. Amen. Consistently. Amen. Praise God. And, and just to move on, eventually, eventually, saints, that promise that was made to her became a reality to her. Amen. And the same thing with us, saints, that promise that was made to us through his word will become a reality to you and I. Yes, it may not feel like it right now. It may not even look like it right now, but I believe that it is becoming that reality. Yes. There's things that we see that we saw as a shadow. The things that we see as a shadow will eventually become the reality. Right. Right. Amen. You will be able to touch it and feel it. Amen. Praise God. So. We've been hearing uh, that term lockdown uh, a lot lately, and, and, and I, was looking, I was looking at what that term means, and, it, and two, two uh, meanings that caught my attention was a state of isolation or restricted access instituted as a security measure. Another one is a freeze or a pause. Yeah. Now, we see it in the, in the physical, amen, but we also know, remember, always keep this in the forefront. God still has his people here on earth. Right, right, right. You and I are still, if you're part of the bride of Christ, you and me are still here on earth. Right. Nothing, can, be whole, nothing can, be, can befall us without God knowing about it. Right. Nothing can befall us or can, or can hurt us without God not, not, not knowing or allowing it in our lives. Yeah, right. If it happened to Job and that was in the Old Testament, how much more not us under the new birth Amen. with the Holy Ghost? That, that, that promise stands firmly. And I know that it stinks that we have to stay locked in and, and we have to, and, I, and, and, you know, we thank God for a little bit of opening. Seems like some governments are opening back up a little bit more. But you know what, saints? To you and I, we should still be shut in. Spiritually. We should still be shut in. Amen. Do you realize that maybe God is allowing this? Because you're so, you're so caught up, you were so caught up two months ago with your daily routine of life, with, your, with, your, with, with the constant things of this, uh, of this world dragging you down. And God's giving you an opportunity to get in and get shut in with him. Amen. Now it's the time. You know, it was when Elijah, amen, he heard him through the, through the uh, thunder roaring, through the cyclone passing by, through the lightning flashing. But it was when that still, small voice came in that he said, yes, God is here. And he heard from God. And it's in that still, small voice that God wants to talk to you. And he's been trying to talk to his people throughout this whole time. Let's just say 50 years. He's been trying to speak to us in a still, small voice, but we don't, we fail to hear him because we allow everything else in our lives to drown that still, small voice out. We allow TV, we allow movies, we allow video games, we allow people, we allow the news, we allow everything around us, jobs, and, and, and even family to draw that, that, that still, small voice out of our lives. But now you have no excuse. Now you, we have no excuse. Right, right. Amen. You know, one thing's for sure, saints, God, we, as I've said, God's allowing it. It doesn't matter what you or I personally think about right. what's happening. Right. Uh, you know, you have your opinion. I may have my opinion. But one thing's for certain. God, amen, is on the scene and is in control. Amen. 
Amen. God, amen, it still has a many-membered bride in this hour living on this earth that is going to fulfill that promise. Amen. Somebody is going to manifest Jesus Christ even in this COVID-19 hour. Amen. Because he promised that, he, that, that, that there would be a bride without spot or wrinkle. Amen. It doesn't matter. But God is very mindful that his little bride is still here on earth. Praise God. And, you know, I personally, like I said, I personally believe that the things that are unfolding at this time are opportunities for you and I to get in tune with God, to get in tune with God. Amen. This is an opportunity for God to fulfill his promise of having a bride without spot or wrinkle. Amen. Through you, through you in this hour. It's so easy to get caught up with the, with the physical things of this life. Look what 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says. If the brothers can bring that up so you can read it along with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 says, Paul saying, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Right. I think that it's a light affliction because none of us are in a hospital right now. None of us are, right. are, we still are eating steak. We're still, we're still enjoying uh, entertainment and things as such. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Praise God. Those are the things that we need to look at. Amen. We can get so caught up with the news. We could get so caught up with what's going on. Amen. But those are things that are seen. It's the things that are unseen that God is trying to get our attention with. And that's what we try. We shun away because it's not so glamorous and it's not so pretty. And I don't understand it. But that's the only thing that's going to. Those are the things that are going to change your body. <laughs> Those are the things, the things that are not seen is what will change your body. The things that are not seen is what will bring the dead from the ground. (laughs) Amen. Those are the things that, that, that matter in this life. Because look, the things that are seen are temporal, the Bible says. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Just as eternal as that word that's in you right now. Amen. Praise God. So what should we be looking at? And so this, uh, I want to go, go with this in, in, uh, um, into the, the heart of the message, I guess. Because, saints, in, there are many instances in the scripture where uh, being shut in was a necessity for both safety and spiritual reasons. And you can see it in many different scriptures and many different passages. Uh, let's look at, for example, Noah and his family. Noah and his family shut in the ark, safe from the storm. Now, God was the one who told him to build that ark. God was the one who who said, I have found no grace in nobody else but Noah. And it was, it was, it was, I guess Noah had believed God's word before, then God wouldn't, didn't mind to give him his word to go build an ark. Amen. So he built that ark, took God by his promise. He'd never seen rain. He'd never seen anything like that, but He's, he, he believed God and he went on and get, took God at his promise. And look what Genesis 7, 16 says. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded him. And watch, the Lord shut him in. And the Lord shut him in. It was the Lord that shut Noah and his family in. And as they were shut in, God was still in control. Chaos was outside. The world was dying. The world was drowning. Animals were dying. Nature was in chaos, but he was safe in the ark of God. He was safe because he was in his promise. He was in obedience to his word. Amen. And that's what God wants us to be in this hour, saints, to be in obedience to his word. When you are in obedience to his word, amen, then God can, God is able to take you out, uh, out of, out of, uh, to, to, to keep you safe in this hour. Right. When you are in obedience to his word. Amen. 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 
When you believe his word, God can keep you safe in this hour. Let's look at, for example, the children of Israel when they first uh, ate the Passover. There's another. Look what, what, look what Exodus 12, 21, 23 says. Or it says, Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door for his house until the morning. And we know that it was because the death angel was coming through. But you know what, saints? They had to obey the prophet's word first. Because otherwise, whether they were out or they were in, the angel, if they didn't obey that word, the angel was still going to get that firstborn. They had to be in obedience to that word. They had to be, amen, and it was inside there, it was inside there that, they, that they were able to gather with their families and feed off the lamb. Right. <laughs> Have communion right. with one another right. and with the lamb. <laughs> eat off the lamb. Right. And you know what? They had to eat all of it. Not just a little bit, but all of it they had to eat. So it was a time for them that God allowed. Hey, look, the angel of death is out here in this hour. Amen. But you can be safe inside. Amen. Not, not physically. I don't mean physically. But I'm talking about you safe in, in Christ. Amen. Feeding off of him. Eating off his word. Amen. And that word changing you from the inside out. Preparing you for deliverance in this hour. Amen. Because it's going home time, saints. It's going home time. And for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Amen. Praise God. How many thank God for that? Amen. Amen. Another example we can look at is God watching over David, uh, shutting him in in, in in the caves from Saul. You know, it was God that led David. Amen. Through in his lifetime. Sure, David made mistakes, and sure, David fell, and David did his own thing at times, but you know what? God was in control of his life. Yeah, right. Amen. He knew his heart. David had a heart, amen, that I want, I want to serve God. I want that, that he's the only one that, that fulfills my life. Killing a giant didn't fulfill his life. <laughs> Being the king didn't fulfill his life. Right. But the only thing that fulfilled his life is being in constant fellowship with him and his word. Glory. Amen. And he expresses this throughout the Psalms uh, many times. Look what Psalms 57 one says. He says to the chief musician, Altashith, Mictam of David, when he fled from Saul in the cave. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings. Will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed? It was a time. It was a time of, 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 of worry and, 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 and frightened during this time that he was being chased, chased down by Saul because he knew that Saul wanted his life. And say, Satan in this hour wants your life. He would do anything he could if he could take your life. Oh, my But you know what? God has hidden us, amen, especially his little bride. He has hidden us in his bosom, in that spiritual cave, amen, where not even Satan can do anything to us unless God allows it. Amen. Unless God permits it, amen, he cannot hurt one hair on top of your head. Amen. You know, I was reading, I was listening to this Jewish rabbi the other day, and he brought out something very interesting. He said, David one time was... And you may have heard this, but one time David was walking through the fields when he was younger, caring for his dad's sheep. And he was just uh, uh, looking at nature and how and how nature would produce something. They would give back something. The honeybee would give back honey. You know, the, 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 the calf would give meat. You see, the cow would give meat the, or give milk. The, the sheep would give wool. Amen. They would give back something. And then he, start, he was walking and he, and, and he noticed the spider. And he noticed a little spider and he said, 
he could not pinpoint what was the reason for the spider. He said, what is the reason for the spider? And so later, later on, years down the road, when he came to this point in his life where Saul was, 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 was chasing him, he went into a cave. And Saul was nearby. But there was a little spider that had made a little spider web at the entrance of the cave. And Saul and his men didn't bother looking into that, 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 that cave because they didn't think there was anybody in there because <laughs> of the little spider web. And they just walked by. Now, this is, a, this is according to the, I think it was in the Talmud, the, the Hebrew Talmud, and I don't know if it's true or not. But he, David realized there is a purpose for all things. <laughs> all things have a purpose. And it was in that moment, that little insignificant spider Amen. You, you might notice it in the corner and it's probably just sitting there doing, it. you think it's not doing anything, but God has it there for a purpose. And you know what? A spider has one of the strongest materials there is in the, on the, in the world. And that's their web. That little bitty thing could be a little small bitty spider. Not necessarily a big one, about the size of your hand, but it could, it could be a little spider. God has a purpose for all that. Just as these little times, as these times that we have, saints, we don't may not understand them, but God has a purpose for all of it, saints. God has a purpose for why we are here in this hour with so many few people. God has a purpose for it. Amen. It's 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 difficult, especially for us ministers, <laughs> to not get the sisters' amens too. <laughs> Amen. But. It's, it's, God knows the reason why. Right, yes. Amen. God knows the reason why. You know, we look at, at, at Jesus, another example, Jesus being shut in. There was a time where he had to be shut in with God. Yeah. You know, he had, he, he was uh, within himself. He was a human just as much as he was God. Sure. And, and he was, he didn't want to go and die on that cross. No. Humanly, he didn't want to. But he knew something deep down and in him caused him and would push him. This must needs be happened. And the, re and the thing that, that pushed him was not really the fact to do it, but it was because the word needed to be fulfilled. Right, right. There were scriptures in the Bible that needed to be fulfilled, even right there on the cross. So many promises and so many uh, uh, scriptures were fulfilled even just right there on the cross. But Jesus came to that point that he had to die to himself. He got down and he said, Lord, let it not be my will, but thy will be done. It was in the secret of the night while the disciples were sleeping and nobody knew anything about it. But God was doing something supernatural there in, the, in, 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 in that moment. And God gave him the strength. Amen. And angels came down and ministered to him. Amen. And you and I, in this hour, we, gotta have, we have to have our own Gethsemane. Yes. Amen. Right. Could it be this time? Could it be this is the time for us to have our own Gethsemane? Right. Exactly. Amen. Right. You may not understand it, and you may not want to go through it. You know what, saints? I, 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 I battle in my mind. I, I, this is me speaking, but I battle in my mind, humanly speaking. Because I think of my daughters. I think of my wife. I think of, of, of my family. I think of, of, of their innocency and I think of, of what, what, what could happen to them. But yet I have, to, I have to sit and say, Lord, you promised in your word that you would give me my children. You promised in your word that none, that, that you, you, would, you would protect not just me, but you would protect my family as well. Amen. Amen. You promised it in your word, Lord, and, 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 and you have to believe God's word and, and, and get down and say, Lord, this is what you promised, and so this is what I'm going to act upon. It's, there's no sense of me in worrying. There's no sense in me and in, 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 amen when there's still glorious things to look forward to. And I know that those scriptures still need to be fulfilled, and I'm going to be here to fulfill them by God's grace. <laughs> I'm going to be here to see a resurrection. Amen. By God's grace. If God doesn't take me before that, and I believe that you desire the same thing as well. Amen. So Jesus, he had to isolate himself from the world in order to receive strength from, from on high. Amen. And then another great thing that took place is the 120. 
The 120 in the upper room, they had to shut themselves in. They had to shut themselves in in order for them to receive power, amen, to go and, and, and do what they did afterwards. We know the story. I'm not going to dwell there. But they were scared. They were scared of the Sanhedrin. They were scared of the, of the Jews out there. They were scared. All they had was just the promise of, the, of Jesus. And with that promise, amen, they went in. But they came out with much more than, the, the, amen, than that fulfilling their lives, Amen. Because why? They shut themselves in. It was just them and God. And said, Lord, you said, in your, you said before you ascended uh, uh, that, that you would do this. And you would send the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we believe it. And that settles it. And God did the rest. Now, do you want that in your life in this hour? Or are we just going to just sit back and, and, and look at that news and, and, and just be afraid and scared and... and, and the, or do you want to come out with power Amen. from on high? That's right. Amen. I, I believe we need to be sensitive, sensible. Right. I'm not saying for us not to be sensible. Right. But there should be something within us, amen, that, that, that's more than what's going on in this earth. Amen. That draws you to a greater promise than CNN and, and the NBC. Amen. And that's his word. That's his promise. You notice that, that, that pyramid. That this, this, this smaller pyramid is much smaller. It's a smaller little, 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 little putt. Nobody knows anything about, hardly. That's where God wants to meet us. Right. Amen. And that little secret, that, in that little secret room. Amen. You know, if you look back at the woman at the well, you know, she had, she had life going on. She had five husbands and we know, but... And, and, and living her life and, and probably just it was a daily routine. Amen. But one day she went again to the well as she had accustomed to go every day at noon. After all the other girls had gone, she had to go there by herself because she couldn't be with the other girls who were pure and virgin. And she was uh, she was marked by the world. She was marked. But one time there stood the Lord Jesus right there in that, in that well, right there sitting right there next to that well. And you better believe he knew exactly why he was there because the Bible says so. <laughs> he knew exactly what was going to happen. And he was not afraid to be seen with a woman that was marked red by society. He wasn't scared of that. He was looking for that soul. He was looking for, he was looking, amen, to have, uh, to have something change in her life. Right. And she, right there, when she took the time to talk to the word, when she took a little t- a secret away from, from, this, from the main city, away from, from society, she right there where the well of water was, there was a physical well of water, but yet the real well of water was the one talking to her, talking to her and because she took that time, God was able to do something right. great for her in that Amen. hour. Discerned her life, and she, and she went running to the, to come see a man who told me the things that I've done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. And you know, that's what can happen to you and I when we get in secret with God. Amen. Right. Nobody has to know. Right. Right. Amen. Nobody has to know but you and God. And when, you, and when you take God at his word and you say, Lord, I believe your word and that settles it. Lord, here I am. Talk to me. He, I believe he'll speak back to you. Amen. Sometimes we think that we have to do all of the speaking when we pray. When we, but it's God also wants to talk to us. Yeah. God also wants to talk to us through his word. And if you just stay still, sometimes he'll, he'll even put things in your mind and in your heart. Right. I, I, that's, ha- that's happened to me. Because the Bible says that it'll be the Holy Ghost speaking through you. Right. Amen. Those things that are needful in this hour. Amen. Amen. I'm almost done, saints. Do you remember that little secret bro- uh, room that Brother Branham saw there in that vision? Um, now, if you read in Psalms chapter 91, verse 1. Psalms 91. The Bible says here, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Amen. And and it's interesting that David put it that way. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Not that that stays there for a little temporarily. 
Amen. But that dwelleth in, amen. Uh, you dwell in your home. You don't just stay there three days out of the year. You, you dwell in it 365 days of the year, so, uh, you know, unless we're in a hotel somewhere <laughs> traveling. You live in your home. You dwell in your home. You reside in your home. Amen. And so God wants us to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Not just two times out of the week. Not just when you come to church. Amen. Every single time, every single day, every morning, every evening. Amen. It's time to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That's an opportunity for you to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Amen. And he that does that shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come not thy dwelling. In verse 10 of that same chapter. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, look what, look what Jesus said here in Matthew 6.6. 6. I'm trying to move a little quickly. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Hey, hey, that's how God works. <laughs> God doesn't work in the, in, the great, in the great loud things. God works in secret. Again, saints, everything that is taking place in this hour is because God is trying to speak to you and me in secret. Amen. Because you and me are still here on this earth. His bride is still here on this earth. Keep that in mind because we, it can, we can easily get so fearful and so scared and so, and so terrified, but say, hey, wait a second, I'm still here. Right. <laughs> and if you know where you're standing in God, amen, that should, oh, all right, God has something for me to fulfill then. Glory. Amen. Right. Brother Dale, amen, he's still here with us because he's got a work to fulfill. Right. Amen. Brother Don, you have a work to fulfill. Right. Brother Mark, Amen. Brother brother Zach, each and every one of us has a work to still fulfill. Otherwise, we would have right. been gone a long time ago. Right. Right. So God's not done with you. Right. And young people, young people, every single day that you have the opportunity to serve God. Amen. Take that opportunity. Right. Don't wait till tomorrow what you can do today. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. The Bible says it's today. It doesn't say next week or next year because you don't know. Things changed in two months. What about in a year? You better, you better be in God, young people. You better be in Christ. And, and don't look so much to the current things that you are trying to achieve in this hour because you may not even get there. But your soul... Amen. Your soul is more important to God. And that's what we need to be, be, be more interested in. Sure, we need to still plant our potatoes. We still need to plant for life. We still, as if God was, if Jesus was coming in a hundred years. But the brother Bram said, you need to live your life as if he was coming tomorrow. So are we living our lives as if he was coming today, tonight, this tomorrow morning? Or are we just so consumed about what we need to do, about our businesses, about our career, about marriage, about all these things? Amen. You may not even get to that point. You may not even get to that point. I would love to see my, my daughters married. I don't know if I'll get to that point. But you know what? I better do everything I can for them. Amen. Spiritually speaking, because that's the thing that's going to last eternal. <laughs> you better do whatever you need to do. Amen. Eat for the eternal, build your treasures, put your treasures in heaven. Right. Amen. Put your treasures in heaven, Jesus said. Yep. Amen. Look what Brother Branham says here, going back to this secret place. Now, Jesus told us to enter into our closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. Again, there's the shutting of the door, there's the shutting in. Amen. But the Branham says here in this, in this message, he says, let's just go down to the area down here. And it says, uh, go up a little bit. Okay. And it left me and around, uh, and it went right down over the top of that, uh, of that audience and went and stood over the top of that little building and then settled down on top of it. 
And this is when Brother Brandon was having the vision about that little, that little room, that little room where the people were going in sick and they were coming out healed. <clears throat> and then when it did, this one that was standing by me, b behind me, the same voice, the angel's voice, he said, I'll meet you in there. And this is the third pool, but nobody will know nothing about it. And I personally believe that that third pool is the opening of the word in this hour. In you and I, saints. Amen. Amen. And I said, well, I don't understand why in there. Why there? You know, why not in the church? Why, why, why not in, 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 in Rome? Why not in Jeffersonville? Why not in Arizona? Right. Huh? He said, it will not be a public show this time. Amen. God, God's not interested in, in, in public shows. God's not interested in, in clowning around for the devil, like Brother Brown said, when Jesus was being tempted by Satan. And I said, I don't understand going into that closet like that. And he said, is not it written by our Lord when thou prayest, be not like the hypocrites who like to be heard before man, but enter into the secret closet and pray to the Father who seeth in secret, and he who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. It's perfectly to the scripture every time. And I said, I understand. Amen. Next, next scripture. I mean, next quote. He said, watch. And this woman, when she come out of there on the ambulance stretcher, she was pushing the stretcher out the other side. And she said, the lady asked her with the, said, what happened? She said, I don't know. It's just happened. She said, I've been in this stretcher. Said, I've been down in bed for years. And here come the man out packing his crutches. And they asked him, what? Said, he didn't know. And he was coming to the platform to testify. And I said, I don't understand that in there. See, Brother Branham didn't understand that in there. He didn't understand the, the vision. Right. And watch. Watch what he says. And watch. He's always scriptural. He said, Did not our Lord say, When thou prayest, be not like the hypocrites that like to make a show. Said, Enter into the secret closet. And when you've done so, close the door. Then pray to your Father. And what seeth in secret, and he seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. And he said, You remember that name that you were hunting that time that you dreamed about? Yeah. And I said, Yes. He said, I'll meet you in there, and this time it won't be a public show, and the vision left me. Now, it's interesting that he tells him, remember that name that you were hunting that time. Next, next quote. God only has one meeting place. He said over there in the book of Exodus that I have chosen the place to put my name, and that's the only place that I'll meet people, and he has cho chose a place to put his name. And where he put his name, that's where he met Israel. He has got a place that he meets his church today. And he chose that name. And that name is Jesus Christ. Glory. And there is where he meets the true believer. When he is in Jesus Christ, that's where God chose to put his name. You say God's name? He said, I came in my father's name. So that's where God put his name was in Christ. And then Christ is where we can all meet under the shed blood and there have real true fellowship. Lord. Amen. And I like what Brother Dale said this morning, you know, about, about the, um, I forgot the, the thought now, towards the end. He said uh, something regarding the us, that, that, uh, ah, forget that. I forgot no. now. Anyways, but that, Christ being the first fruits. Yes. Amen. And yes, Brother Brandon was the first, was, was the wave chief, amen, wave in this hour, amen, but that needs to also be applied to a many member bride as well, amen. Amen, because it's the same Christ, amen. Well, we, we are under that same name as well, amen. Praise God. It's in Christ where we can all meet under the shed blood and there have true, real fellowship. And I don't know if there's, a, there's one more here or not. Praise God. It's God's chosen place of worship. My friends, I don't want to hurt feelings, but I am responsible for a message. And that message is come out of this mess. And if I ask you to come out, where am I going to take you to? Would I take you to the Branham Tabernacle? It's as much fault as any of the rest of them. So it's not a physical building. It's not in a physical location. And it's not in a, amen, it's in Christ. Amen. It's in Christ. But there's one place I can take you to where you're safe and protected from death. That's in Jesus Christ, God's place of worship. Right. That's the place I'm introducing to you tonight. 
where God put his name, where he promised he would meet every person that come in there. He would worship with him and feast with him. That's in Christ, not in no church, no tabernacle. Right. Amen. Right. So it, 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 God is not doing this. Again, he, he kept reiterating it's not a public show. Right. He kept reiterating it's a secret thing. Amen. And, and, and I believe that is spiritual in this hour. Because right now, this walk with God is between you and God. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. It's between you and God. It's not between me and Brother Dale. Although Brother Dale, amen, he, he, I, I can be, uh, I can be, uh, um, uh, he can, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, my mind escapes me. Yeah, he can, he can, uh, uh, <laughs> I forget the word. Anyways, we can all, uh, we can all, uh, uh, Receive from one another, in other words, you see? But it's, it's, it's a relationship between you and God. Amen. Amen. It's between you and God. It's, it's not between me and Zach, and it's not between me and Brother Tony. It's between you and God in this hour. Exactly. Amen. It's in that secret place. Amen. Yes. Shut in with right. God. Amen. Now, it's not, even, it's not even necessarily in your closet door at your house. Right. Although Jesus said, that's where you should pray. <laughs> In a secret place. It's not necessarily that. Amen. It's wherever you hold that name of Christ on high. Amen. That's where you can meet Christ. Amen. In this hour. And I believe it can be anywhere. Praise the Lord. I believe it can be wherever God has placed you. You know, Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. Amen. So great things are in store for the bride in this hour, saints. You know, and like I said, a resurrection is coming. I want to finish here with these last three verses here. If the brothers can, can bring back Isaiah chapter 26 again, and we'll start at verse 19, and we'll finish with this. Amen. Isaiah, or we'll start at verse 17. Sorry. Isaiah 26, like, like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out in her pangs, so have we been in the sight of the Lord. Amen. I, I hope that that's, that's, that's how you are within you. Amen. Every day of your life, amen, should be a revival for you. You know, we just came out, Brother Wade, preaching a series on revival. Amen. It's a, it's a personal thing. It, it's a thing that, like I said, between you and God in this hour. Amen. It's, it's a secret thing that the world will not know anything about, but it's so powerful that it's going to resurrect the dead. Glory. It's so powerful that it's going to take us in a rapture. Amen. It's so powerful that it's going to give us, amen, to fulfill and to, and to show forth everything that needs to be manifested in order for us right. to fulfill his word. Because God has done his part. Now he's, he's entrusting for us to do our part. Right. Amen. And we can only do it only through the Holy Spirit. Right. Only, yeah. through, only through his, through his power. It's not your power. It's not, it's, not, it's not my power. But it's God's power in this right. hour. Amen. Right. The power of the Holy Ghost in this hour. And it's not the wind, and it's not the, 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 the rain, and it's not the thunder, but amen, but it's something secret that I, I, you don't even hear. Right. You, you don't even hear, but God doing something powerful in, in our lives. Right. Like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out in her pangs, so have we been in the sight of the Lord. We should be with child right now, right. Right. getting ready to, be del- to deliver. Glory. We, we should be, in other words, that's talking about pregnancy. A woman pregnant. We should be pregnant with Christ. Amen. Getting ready to deliver. Amen. In this hour. And it's painful. I've never been through it. But I've seen my wife go through it. (laughs) And I know it's not fun. Because I saw her. And I I, I helped her. And and, and, and it's not fun. Don't worry. There were other other nurses and stuff around at the same time. I wasn't just there by myself. (laughs) But... Verse 18 says, we have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. 
You know, saints, I, 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 think of brother, I think of our precious brother Dick who has just gone on. Sometimes you know when the saints go, I almost envy them. <laughs> I, you know, I feel, I feel happy for them. I don't really get sad. I, yes, it's sad, and, and, and I understand, especially if they're a family member. But, but if, they were, if, they were, if they were in Christ, amen, it, to me, it brings a joy inside of me. Right. Amen. And I feel excited and it's almost like an envious. I want to be right. in that place too. Right. And not have to go through, uh, through these things that are taking place in this hour and not be under that. Amen. But you know what, saints? Again, God has you and I here in this hour. Amen. Because Brother Dick had fulfilled his part. Right. Now it's you and I turn to fulfill our part. Right. Amen. Amen. Verse 19. Thy dead man shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Amen. Awake and sing ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead. The earth, there's going to point, come a point in time where that's going to be fulfilled. Right. 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 Amen. That's going to be fulfilled. Christ's resurrection, amen, is the pledge and, and the earnest of the dead in Christ. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Christ's resurrection is that is that is that earnest that God has given the dead that have come that have also died in Christ, because He lives, they also will live. Amen. Praise God. Now, now, because we have that promise, verse nineteen, we have that promise that the dead shall live, and then verse twenty says, "So come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers." And shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Because we have these promises. Amen. It's time for us to shut ourselves in with God, with these promises, with, that, with the promise that he said he's going to come and come back for us. Amen. And for us to meet him in the air. Praise God. For behold... The Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And we know that's going to happen. All the kings and all the rulers and all the people right. that think that they're in charge don't know that God's, somebody's, somebody's in charge. <laughs> they're they're going to be punished. They think they're in control. God's the one who's ultimately in control. The inhabitants, they will punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Amen. There's no way, saints, that when you, when there are powerful people in this hour with Christ in you to prevent, Paul said, to prevent from those resurrecting out of the ground right. or those coming out, coming, uh, co coming back, the dead in Christ rising. Amen. There, there's no way for us to hinder that. Amen. That, that leads to that. Right. Amen. When we are shut in in God. Amen. Right. I hope you all... Uh, understood my thought. Amen. Amen. Sometimes, you know, you get these thoughts in your head and they're, you know, they're real to you, but right. you can't bring them out exactly the way you want to. I know Brother Dell probably knows what I'm talking about, Brother Aaron and other minister brothers here. But saints, I'm, what I'm getting to is be still and know that he is God. Right. Right. Exactly. Be, be still. Don't, 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 don't jerk from left to right or, or, or this, that, or the other. Amen. Just be still and know that God is in complete control. And this is your opportunity. As I said last, sermon, uh, last message that I preached, this is your opportunity to shine. But the world may not see it. <laughs> but it's going to be between you and God. But it'll produce something great in this hour. Because, saints, what else is going to bring the dead from the ground? Uh, the dead re re is it you watching the news constantly? No. Is it, is it you playing video games and, 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 and watching Netflix? Is it you? Uh, what's, or is it you worrying cons constantly and looking to the things that are seen? No. What's going to bring the dead saints to come? Amen. And for us to get in a rapture is you abiding in Christ. Amen. Right. Staying in secret in that name. Right. Having your own personal time with God. Right. Continually reading his word. Right. That's staying in that secret place. Right. Continually praying. That's being in that secret place. Continually coming to church. Doing what you can do. 
because we have great promises to look to in this hour. Amen. It's not, it's not, a, it's not over. <laughs> it's just getting started. <laughs> Amen. It's just getting started. Amen. God bless you, saints. If the, minis- if the musicians could come. Amen. Let's just sing that little chorus, shut in with God in a secret place, key of C, key of C. Shut in with God in a secret place. Uh. <clears throat> Praise God. What a wonderful hour that we live Glory. in. No need to be sad. No need to be depressed. No need to be right. worried. No even need to be angry. Right. Sure, there's lots of injustice that goes on in the world. And sure, mm-hmm. things. But you know what? The promise of God, amen, calms me down. I just look to the promise because, and, and as, as Isaiah 26 there said at the beginning, Isaiah 26, 3, God will put him in perfect peace, in perfect peace that his mind stayed on him and on him. Amen. Not on Donald Trump. No, not on him. On him, the word. Amen. Donald Trump can't bring me peace. Nobody can bring me peace on this earth, but the word can. Get in the word, and I believe it will give you peace. Shut in with God in a secret place. There in the Spirit, beholding His face, regaining. physically but spiritually shut in with God in a secret place the world doesn't even know anything about it in the spirit beholding his face Sing it unto him now. Shut in with God. Shut in with God. If you have a need, God knows about it. He can meet your need right there and now. In that place where you are. Just get in his name. The Spirit beholding his face. I'm say that that you just love to be shut in with God (laughs) I've never had one moment where I was shut in with God and you know in 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 true real desiring to pray and desiring to study his word that he has never let that he has let me down never now when it's when it when it when I go in there because I feel like I have to do that I, I I I don't get anything out of that right But when I go in there, and there's been times when I just go in, and it's like something just cries within me just to to pray and to cry out to God. And God, oh my, I just have a wonderful time with him. I I feel feel like the woman at the well. (laughs) I come out of there so so revived. Amen. But I had to do my part in order for him to do his part. Amen. You have to do your part and desire for him to do his, his part. Don't, don't expect, amen, don't expect for God to do it all and, and amen. There's something that you must do. Don't wait for the minister to pray for you. There's something that you must do in this hour. You can pray for yourself. Amen. No, no, I don't have to pray for you, brother. Dale doesn't have to pray for you. When it comes the time when we're not going to be able to pray for you, amen, we're not going to be able to meet with one another, what are you going to do then? You better be in God. You better be in Christ. You better be in that headstone. Amen. You better be in that word. 
God bless you, saints. Continue to pray for one another. God bless you, the ones that joined. Amen. Brother Dale, do you have anything you need to say? Okay. All right. So let's just bow our heads and, and just continue to remember the, the needs amongst us. And let's just bow our heads before we dismiss. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for your word, Father. And thank you, Lord, for the admonition, Father, that you give us through your word, Lord. Because, Father God, you are wooing and you are calling your people in this hour, a bride in this hour, Lord Jesus, to draw closer to you, no matter how bleak things are on the outside. But, Lord God, when, those, when that high priest was in there, Father God, inside that secret place where your glory would come down, Father God, oh, Lord, he was shut in, Father God, and the world was shut out, Lord. And, Father, that's where you want us to be in this hour, Lord. Shut in with you, oh, God, so that the world, Father God, can be shut out. And we look to you, Father, and to you only, because you're the, our only hope, your only strength, your only help in the time of trouble, Father. Oh, Father, we love you. We ask that you'd be with us now, Father, as we're uh, heading to our different places of abode. Watch over us. Keep us safe. And, Father, bring us back again, Father God, to receive from your word, Father. We love you and I ask you these things now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. Go in the fear of the Lord. With God in a secret place.